All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the absolute most juiced combat sports of all time. All right, we see a lot of steroid use in other sports outside of the combat world, football, baseball, basketball, but there's something different about using steroids when you're stepping into a ring or cage and the goal of the sport is to hurt your opponent. So today we are taking a look at the absolute most juiced combat sport of all time, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's gone to the point where there's more PDs in Jiu Jitsu than almost any other sport. certain sports like grappling. Gordon Ryan, who's the greatest grappler of all time, openly admits taking performance enhancing drugs. Openly talks about it because everybody's doing it. And he's just honest. He's just like, yeah, I take them. Everybody's taking them. There's, they're not illegal in our sport. And if you look at him, he looks like yeah. a guy who takes performance enhancing drugs. He looks like a fucking Greek god. But you can't look at him. That's Gordon Ryan. I mean, not only is he the greatest. He looks like Zeus. He's the greatest of all time, and he's only 27 years old. What, what but is that he, he spray paints his beard? Uh, no, he uh, he died. He bleached blonde, blonde his hair. Or yeah, he, he looks like Zeus. He looks white. like he could be yeah. uh, with the lightning bolt. But look at the fucking build on that guy. But what sport grappled. is that? Jiu-Jitsu. Oh. He's the greatest no no gi jiu-jitsu competitor that's ever lived, for sure. Everybody admits it. Everybody's scared of him. And he dominates everybody. He's won like 50 plus matches in a row, now, which why is would unheard a guy of. Like you could say it's all performance enhancing drugs, but that's not correct because it's also his, his tech. It. Everybody's doing it. And it's his, it's not everybody. There's some like younger guys like the Rutolo brothers who are totally clean, but you know, they're 19 years old and a lower weight class, but he's a heavyweight. And if you, if you just look at all the elite guys in the sport, when you go to Abu Dhabi and you look at the, the best guys that are competing, so many of them are on shit. Most of them are on shit. They're well, if you're not testing for it, right. you'd be a moron not to be on it. To be able to train every day the way a guy like Gordon does, and I mean every day. He trains 365 days a year. Christmas, birthday, fuck you, show up. Everybody shows up. The, one of the things, like if you're on performance enhancing drugs, your recovery right. is way better. So you're able to train far more than someone who's not on those things. Okay. Yeah, for sure, on some shit. And openly admits it. But so are the guys he's competing against. I know for a fact. The guy, guy, he's dominated guys that are also on performance enhancing drugs. This is like All right, guys. So what is BJJ or jiu-jitsu? Essentially, jiu-jitsu is a submission grappling art, right? The, the whole entire point of a jiu-jitsu match is to submit your opponent via some type of joint lock or a choke. All right, so we're looking at arm bars, we're looking at shoulder locks, Kimuras, Americanas, we're looking at leg locks, heel hooks, knee bars, and any kind of choke, rear naked choke, triangle choke, Dar's choke, Anaconda, the list goes on and on. In the sport of Jiu Jitsu, there are a few main stream tournaments that would be considered the the highest level like the olympics per se of jiu-jitsu the absolute highest tier of jiu-jitsu competition that you can compete in would be considered the adcc the abu dhabi championships and adcc openly does not test any of their athletes just zip no testing at all and when you take a look at some of the athletes that come out here to compete, it is clear as day that they are juiced to the absolute max. Like they're able to take whatever they want to take and they are putting, putting themselves on the line going against the other highest level guys in the world. Now, you know, this is, uh, you know, everybody that competes in jujitsu, everybody knows about it. This is a well-known fact. And so it's just kind of like one of those things where if you see a guy competing at the highest level of the sport, there's probably like an 80-90% chance that he's using some type of performance enhancing drug.
Now, to be a competitor in Abu Dhabi at this level, guys, I'm telling you, there's probably a handful of guys who are not on PDs. There's a handful. I think the vast majority are on PDs. Now, how much PDs are they on? I think some guys are on more than others, and some of them are flirting with death, in my opinion, guys. Some of them might be knocking off 10, 20 years off their life. Is it worth it? I don't think so. Personally, I would never do that. I don't think it's worth it. Could we say, no, guys, uh, let's give them the benefit. Nobody's on PDs. No, guys, we can't do that. It's, it's gone to the point where there's more PDs in jiu-jitsu than almost any other sport. It really does make you feel for those athletes who are clean and they're out there winning or even just facing a lot of these guys who are on PEDs. One big reason why I think that, that our sport doesn't have any testing yet is because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is still so early in its infancy. If you look at it from a sport, like it's only been around for, you know, 30, 30, maybe 40 years competitively. So we are still very fresh in the world of jiu-jitsu. I would say like the leading event or organization, Flow Grappling, they are probably like the, the top of our game right now as far as like production, uh, leading good events with high level fighters. On YouTube, they currently, they just hit 400K subscribers, which is actually huge for us in the sport of jiu-jitsu. Over the last year or two, I've seen their subscriber number going up dramatically. I think maybe a year ago, it was at 200 or 250. So in the last year or two, we've really been hitting a big, big growth spurt in the amount of fans and people that we're seeing coming uh, to watch our sport of jujitsu. Now, this is the king, right? Flow Grappling is the absolute biggest event, production, you, whatever you want to call it in our sport of jiu-jitsu and we just hit 400k so when you compare it to something like the ufc one championship right we're relatively small and you know this is why i believe that we we don't see a usada we don't see some type of governing body uh who's regularly testing the athletes for peds and it, it's clear as that you know we can look at at multiple of the different high-level competitors, Gordon Ryan, Craig Jones, I think are two very good examples of, if you look at them early in their career, they were much, much smaller, and they competed in, uh, they competed in lower weight divisions earlier in their career, and then as they advanced up to brown black belt, their size increased dramatically and now today you know they're just sitting way bigger stronger um than they used to be are most of the top grapplers on steroids i mean it's hard to say you know some people look like shit and they're on steroids some people look excellent and they're not on steroids it's so so hard to tell that seems to be the, the general consensus that a lot of people on steroids. I'm always a little bit, I don't know, so I'll be honest, I've never, I've never seen anyone take steroids. I've never taken steroids. I don't even know if that's the right term to use or like TRT, any of that. So I'm very careful like to not let my naive vite like um, lead me to take conclusions. But I do feel a little bit weird about the witch hunt nature of it, that some people a little bit too eagerly claim that other genre steroids just because they're successful um, but at the same time it does seem that a lot of athletes will do whatever it takes to be successful yeah i mean if a sport doesn't test you got to assume most people are going to do it and especially now as more money comes into the sport you got to assume more people are going to do it you know i generally like do agcc and like does jiu-jitsu test it's actually encouraged Oh, okay. <laughs> you get a pamphlet okay they don't test there's no test they test to make sure we're on steroids because obviously it's a big show for the ufc fight plus in the future <laughs> they don't want anyone coming in out of shape very nice do you think using steroids in that kind of context in sports is wrong like stepping stepping away if it's not illegal i mean do you think ethically speaking i like to assume everyone's on steroids and i have to feel bad about using steroids myself yeah like how do you just feel about it I mean, it is cheating for sure, whether they test for it or not. I think it is cheating. Obviously, some people are going to say, oh, fuck, everyone's on it. Uh, I should be able to get away with it. it. Makes it even playing field. You know, but it kind of becomes Russian roulette because it's like if one guy's taking a small amount and the other guy 
is taking a huge amount, he's gonna reap huge rewards in the short term, probably be dead pretty early, but die a champion, mind you. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? Do you think, uh, do you think it's worthy to take health risks? I think if you just for the glory. I think if you're 40, about to die, looking at a cabinet of gold medals for wrestling other men, it's probably not going to hit the same way on your deathbed. You know? Why do you think most athletes and coaches don't talk about steroids? Like, why is it such a like a secret? Why is it so embarrassing? I think they probably talk about it like amongst the team and whatnot. Again, I mean, it's only it's, it's going to be more shady if it's like a your your sport is tested or whatnot. We're kind of in the wild west in the in the grappling world, you know. Yeah, but why why don't grapplers talk about it? Because it seems cheating. It's it's kind of insinuated as a, a bit of cheating, even if it's not like uh, if it's not tested. I mean, still you're you're taking a person that could you know maybe has good jujitsu, good mechanics. You're putting them on the leg and they're subbing with a heel hook versus breaking your leg with a heel. You know, something as subtle as that can make you know big differences. Is it possible that steroids are not a huge help in, in grappling? I think if you're bad at jujitsu and you do steroids, you're going to continue to be bad at jujitsu. But if you're great at gear, I'm sorry, if you're great at, at <laughs> grappling, <laughs> if you're great at grappling and then you also do gear, it's going to enhance what you're already you know good at and make you much better. But like, how much is the enhancement? I guess is the question. How much is is muscle value? Right. Like if That's you're the question. if you're How doing gear and you're not changing weight that much, like maybe it, ha it helps you a little bit. But if you know you're, you're gaining 50, 60 pounds of pure muscle, and it's like that's a huge enhancement. That's another human. Uh, does does muscle matter in jujitsu? I guess, I guess is the question. Uh, is it possible that it gets in the way? I say muscle matters, but technique matters more. I also think that it it'll help you develop technique as well because obviously you know testosterone helps with recovery rate. So if you're on gear, you're able to train a lot more. Now, with that being said, if you're not able to learn, obviously it's not going to help in that aspect. But if you're somebody that knows how to learn and get good at jiu-jitsu, and then you add gear on top of that, you're able to do significantly more sessions throughout the week. You know, another one, Andre Galvao. I mean, if we just look at clips of all of these guys competing on the mat, you know, you can even see how like during competition season, Andre is looking enormous. And then even if you just look at Andre a couple weeks, few weeks after competition time, he's relatively much smaller than he was just a few weeks ago. You know, what do you guys think, right? Is this, should it be okay? Like if everybody is able to use, is it just, you know, it's up to you. If you don't want to use, don't do it. But, you know, don't be upset with somebody if they are using PEDs or, you know, do you think we should try to crack down it and, and get our sport clean? You know, I, I can kind of see it from both ways. Like on one side of the spectrum, it's pretty cool to see the highest level athletes plus the use of the PEDs, it kind of just increases their size, their strength, their stamina. So it's like almost like we get to see these crazy super matches of these guys or that are on who knows what. You know, I mean, if there's no drug testing at all, we can only imagine, you know, what these guys may be on. It could be multiple different things. You know, I would probably say that EPO is probably one of the biggest uh, PEDs used in the sport of jujitsu. You know, it's a very cardio based uh, heavy sport. So using EPO would just give you the ability to never get tired, to never fatigue. And Ever wonder what the drug EPO is, how it works, and why some endurance athletes choose to use it illegally? This is going to be the topic of our six second brain bomb for today. So EPO stands for erythropoietin, and it's actually a protein found in the body that increases red blood cell count. Now red blood cells have hemoglobin, which carries oxygen throughout the body. So being the clever human beings that we are, some scientists, aka drug makers, decided to develop a synthetic EPO so that when you inject it, it increases red blood cell count even more and then that equates to more hemoglobin and more oxygen going to working muscles so you can exercise for longer and stronger now you may be saying hey sign me up for this EPO stuff but I would say mm -mm -mm. in the words of Mr. Mackey from South Park okay drugs are bad because while EPO sounds good there's some nasty side effects that can happen especially in hot and humid weather where it can turn your blood into sludge if you don't stay hydrated so take-home point don't do EPO drugs 
know, when you're doing a 15, 20, 30 minute match uh, in submission grappling, I would imagine that EPO would be one of the absolute best things that you could that you could use, especially if you're at an equal skill level. This is a huge thing. If two guys are on the equal equal as far as technique and abilities go, and then one guy's using EPO or some type of PED and the other guy is clean, that could be a huge a huge factor. You know, maybe halfway through the match they're neck and neck. The clean guy starts to fatigue. The guy using the EPO does not get tired. He goes on and he just starts to dominate and win the match. Has there ever been a natural winner? Yeah, look, I look the, the Rotulu brothers are very young. I think they're natural. But there's a lot of guys who are not, in my opinion. And there, there are guys who are natural. Uh, and they make it up with that, you guys. I have no doubt there, there are some. Hard work, dedication. Those guys, <laughs> those guys, I tip my hat. Guys, I want to tip my hat. I want to praise the guys who are hardworking, intelligent, smart, talented, that made it all the way to Abu Dhabi, naturally. I tip my hat to you. And even higher than that, guys, I want to tip my hat and salute all the MMA fighters who go all the way to UFC, naturally, without ever using PDs before, after, or during UFC. Some guys, they get cut, and then they get on PDs, they make it back in UFC. Guys, I tip my hat to you. You guys are the best of the best, and you are not getting the credit you deserve. You're not getting the pay you deserve. Because we know that without a shadow of a doubt, there are countless cheaters in UFC. In Abu Dhabi, it's a known secret, guys. It's known. Everybody knows the other guys on PDs. They're expecting the guy on the PDs. However, there are levels up to this. Guys, there are levels to PDs. I just think that these guys, a lot of them are flirting with death. So I, I would never recommend to my students. If they do it, that's their own prerogative. But I would never recommend somebody to risk their health. I think it's irresponsible for any instructor to ever do that. You know, as of right now, it's it's not looking too good for the for the sport to be held with clean athletes. So, you know, you guys let me know what you think. Will the sport of jiu-jitsu be better if we had drug testing or USADA or you know, would we be held back from seeing some of these super matches like we see us juiced up Andre Galvao, juiced up Gordon Ryan, 8-pack? You know, what do you guys think? Which way is better? If everybody's able to do it, is it fair? Man, this, this is just a big topic, guys. Like, I always wondered, you know, like, just imagine, you know, you're at a big gym. Let's say you're at, like, an Autos headquarters or you're at, you know, Checkmat or any of these, right? And you're a young guy coming up. Pretty crazy to see you know, a combat sport where it's just openly, it's okay, just ever, ever, it's a known fact, everybody knows people use, it's clear as day. If we're gonna move towards the direction of a clean sport, I think we have a long ways to go. You know, I think it's hard to, hard to judge a lot of these people that use, you know, you never know if, if their head coach is encouraging them or, you know, giving them the advice. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Submission Fighter, like, subscribe, and uh, let me know if you guys got any questions or comments down below in the bottom. And we will see you guys on the next video. There's probably more PDs in Jiu Jitsu than any other sport, and there's a lot of PDs in sports, guys. I hate to tell you that. For those of you who don't believe it, I mean, you've lost your mind. Like, you just really don't know anything about sports. You don't know anything about sports.